and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll use the concept of magnetic circuit to solve for flux in a ferromagnetic core. So the core that we'll analyze is shown here. It has three of its limbs with the same area. 15 centimeter is the width and the depth is 10 centimeter. While the fourth limb, this one, is somewhat thinner where the width is 10 centimeters. Now we are assuming that there are n turns of a wire wrapped around one of the limbs of this ferromagnetic core and n is equal to 200 and a current I of 1 ampere is established in this wire. And due to this current, we are interested in finding the magnetic flux that flows through. This. So in my previous lecture, I introduced the concept of a magnetic circuit, very similar to an electrical circuit, where a magnetomotive force F replaces the electromotive force in case of an electrical circuit. The resistance is replaced by the reluctance of the network R and instead of the current that we have in an electrical circuit, a flux phi flows through the circuit. Now in today's lecture, we'll see how we can make a magnetic equivalent circuit of this core and find out the reluctance and flux flowing through this core. Now in order to do that, we need to find out the total reluctance of this ferromagnetic core. And reluctance, if you recall from my previous lecture, is given as L divided by mu times A, where L is the mean path length of the magnetic flux. Mu is the permeability of the material and A is the area. Now, since we know that three of the limbs have the same area, we can combine these to find the reluctance of path one. Let's call L1 as the mean path length of the flux through the first three limbs. So this would be the mean path length starting from the midpoint somewhere here, going to the midpoint here, and then downward towards the midpoint here and then all the way till this point. So this path length, let's call it L1 and also the area in this case, let's call it A1 and this would be the reluctance of the first path. In a similar way, we can then find out the mean path length of the magnetic flux through this fourth thinner limb and also calculate its area and find out the reluctance R2 as L2 over mu times A2. And therefore, our total equivalent circuit will look like N times I, which is the magnetomotive force. Then we have these two reluctances R1 and R2 in series and we are interested in finding the total magnetic flux flowing through this circuit. Now let's proceed to find out this mean path length L1. So since this distance is 15 centimeters till this point, half of this would be 7.5 here and 7.5 here and in between this is 30 centimeters so this total length becomes 45 centimeter here this width is 10 centimeters so half of it will be 5 centimeter here and also 5 centimeter here while this is 7.5 and also 
7.5 here. So this total from this point till this point will be 30 plus 7.5 plus 5 which will be 42.5. Similarly, at the bottom also, this would be 42.5. So the total mean path length L1 comes out as 45 plus 42.5 plus 42.5, which is equal to 130 centimeter and the area a1 is equal to 15 centimeters which is the width multiplied by 10 centimeters which is the depth so this comes out as 150 centimeter square in a similar manner we can find out this distance as 7.5 then we have 30 in between and this will be 7.5 so the mean path length for the second reluctance comes out as 45 centimeter and the area a2 in this case would be 10 centimeter which is the width times 10 centimeter which is the depth so 10 times 10 comes out as 100 centimeter square. Now given these mean path lengths and the areas and also another information which is the relative permeability of this ferromagnetic material which is 2500, we can find out the reluctances R1 and R2 and then calculate the magnetic flux. So let's proceed with that. So R1 is equal to L1 divided by mu naught times mu R times A1 and L1 we just calculated as 130 centimeter divided by the value of mu naught is 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 and the first area we calculated as 150 centimeter square times the relative permeability which is 2500. Now solving for this we get the reluctance R1 as 14,300 ampere turns per Weber. In a similar way we can find out R2 as L2 divided by mu naught times mu r times a2 l2 we calculated as 45 centimeter divided by 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7 times 100 centimeter square times 2500 and this comes out as 27600 ampere turns per weber so now we can sum up these two reluctances and find out the total reluctance as 14,300 plus 27,600 which equals 41,900 ampere turns per Weber. And we also have the information given that the number of turns are 200 and the current we pump into the wire is 1 amperes. Thus we can find out the magnetomotive force F as Ni which would become 200 times 1 or 200 ampere turns. So given this info we can make the equivalent circuit where the magnetomotive force F is given as 200. The total reluctance is given as 41,900. 
and we are interested in finding the magnetic flux flowing through this circuit which simply is equal to 200 divided by 41,900. So this is ampere turns divided by ampere turns per Weber. This comes out as 0 0.0048 Webers. So this is the solution of the problem. So we solve this using magnetic circuit equivalence. We didn't have to use any Maxwell equations. I would like to remind you that this is an approximation because of the inherent inaccuracies which are present in this magnetic circuit model, which will be the topic of my next lecture. I will delve deeper into the inherent inconsistencies, but, but this is still relatively accurate to about 5% of the real answer. And it is still much simpler compared to solving Maxwell's equation. So that's it for today's lecture. I hope today's lecture was clear to you and I'll see you again with another lecture in this tutorial series on electrical machines. Thank you.